Now the next setting I'm going to open will let us take a look at image processors and generators in Boris Blue. And you'll see here we have the AVI movie of the green screen woman again. Since it's green screen footage, I've applied a chroma key image processor as well as a multi-tone image processor which allows you to define a color gradient to be mapped across the luminance of the texture map. And a couple other image processors I use to animate the chroma key figure on and off, a TV scan lines effect and a curtain wipe. Image processors can also be applied at the container level to affect all tracks or specific tracks in the composition depending on the stacking order of the timeline. See how I can have the multi-tone affect both objects or only the background. For now I'll put it back above the chroma key. I can place this bar in the timeline, which we call the current time indicator, or CTI, on the frame I want blue to display while adjusting parameters. See how I've used the CTI to select a frame to view while adjusting the distortion and lines within the scan lines image processor. If I twirl open the track for the extruded rectangle in the background, you can see I've nested a clouds generator in a texture map there. I'll enable the clouds generator and disable our foreground element for now. The generators in blue, one, are noise-based generators that offer options for auto animation. Make some adjustments to that animation here. And of course I could stack image processors or additional generators here as well. But it's also possible to nest a whole shape track in a texture map as I'll do now with our chroma key woman. And you can see that's one quick way to map that element to the extrusion shape. And again, you see the sort of real-time interactivity of Boris Blue.